Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Thomas at the Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Center. Today we're going to talk about plantar plate tears. So the plantar plate is most commonly the structure that holds the toe to the long bone of the foot, the metatarsal, and most commonly it's at the second uh, toe. And this is a ligament that holds these two bones together along with the joint at the base of the toes. And it, it occurs in toes two, three, four, five, all the way across the front of the foot. Uh, it can be a common uh, misdiagnosis condition that's uh, seen by the providers and referred to us uh, for second opinions. The symptoms are usually pain on the bottom of the foot, underneath the uh, ball of the foot described by the patients. They feel like they're stepping on a marble or a rock, or they feel like a tearing or pain uh, going through the foot. It can sometimes be associated with burning as well, which can make it difficult to discern from an aroma or nerve enlargement in the front of the foot. Uh, the symptoms also include the toe moving and contracting, uh, early signs of hammer toes or the toe elevating uh, at the joint, and uh, some generalized difficulty getting into shoes, elevation of the toe, rubbing on the top of the shoes and on the bottom. Kind of twofold, one is a acute trauma, uh, high impact activity, runners, jumping athletes, um, or taking a misstep and having an injury to the ligament, connecting the toe to the foot. And that'll lead to the toe elevating and contracting. The other cause is more genetic or inherited. Uh, certain populations are more common to have hammer toes and bunions. This puts a lot of stress on the ligament connecting the toe to the foot and leads to more contractures of it and elevation with pain. Typically diagnosed by physical exam, there's some certain exam characteristics that show up that differentiate it from other conditions in the front of the foot. Also can be diagnosed by ultrasound or MRI typically. Again, a lot of times this is confused for neuroma, uh, which will cause very similar symptoms. Feel like you're walking on a, a rock or marble, your, your sock is balled up, you have pain directly at the bottom of the foot. Uh, but on physical exam, we can tell based on the anatomy and the, the exams we perform that it's the ligament and not the nerve itself. We usually confirm this with ultrasound or MRI, uh, certainly prior to any uh, treatment or intervention. The typical treatment is non-operative, fortunately. A lot of times we can do offloading in a boot, a surgical shoe, we can make modifications to shoes like inserts, orthotics. Uh, we can do um, carbon fiber inlays that take shock absorption off the joint. We will teach you different ways to tape the toe down and hold it. Sometimes a combination of anti-inflammatories and offloading over about six to eight weeks can allow this to heal. Uh, we usually want to try to avoid steroid injections. Uh, the kind of a misnomer out there, this injection could lead to tearing of the ligament and actually more problems, uh, leading to rupture of the plantar plate or worsening tearing. If the non-operative care doesn't work, uh, then we go on to surgical uh, repairs. And there's essentially two ways to treat this. One is a incision on the top of the foot going down from the top to access the ligament with a rope type device that pulls the ligament and repairs it. The other is going directly on the bottom of the foot to access the ligament where it matches to the joint. Um, each has a different recovery. I would say the one on the bottom is more commonly performed, um, but uh, the one on the top can be better for folks that can't be off their foot as long and it's a less uh, invasive or minimal invasive approach uh, to the plantar plate. Yeah, the recovery process uh, can vary. If we go from the dorsal or top-down approach, uh, then folks can walk sooner. We don't have to typically use external pins that stick out of the toe. Um, most folks are off their foot uh, till about four to six weeks. Then they're transitioning into shoes at about six weeks, uh, getting back to higher impact activity around 12 weeks. Of course, it could take six to 12 months for a final result and for the uh, swelling and everything to go down. If we do the direct approach on the bottom, uh, although more of a guaranteed procedure because we're looking right at the structure, we end up having to append through the toe. And that has to be taken out about six weeks afterwards. So you're off your foot for six weeks. We take the pen out, then you're walking in a boot till about week 12, and then transitioning to uh, regular shoes. Goal with both of these is to be back to high impact activities around three to six months. Uh, some folks require physical therapy. Some are able to do it on their own, and we guide that uh, and kind of individualize our patient care to that. Yes, yeah, so any risk uh, of surgery is infection, um, blood flow issues, um, anesthesia complications, 
This is actually a fairly low risk procedure for us, very low risk for blood clots, low risk for um, recurrence. One of the things we can get is some stiffness of the toe uh, long term. Usually doesn't hurt the patient, they're able to get back to running and high impact activities, but I uh, can just notice some stiffness over time. Um, there could be recurrence, certainly if we had another injury, or we could even see it occur in other toes uh, further down, uh, say towards the outside of the foot once you fix the second toe. It can occur in any of the toes, but the risk factors are very low for this procedure. Yes, that's a great question. You know, at least treat it conservatively. We have to try to, to tape down the, the toe or offload it uh, to allow that ligament to heal. One of the fears we have is that uh, we would call it a hitchhiker toe. The uh, ligament would rupture and the toe would go straight up. Uh, it's one of the structures that's helping us keep the toe down along with the tendons on the bottom of the foot and the toe. Uh, if we let that go and it, it tears entirely, then the tendons on the top of the foot are gonna pull it up and it's gonna elevate and have difficulty in shoes. We actually sometimes see patients fairly commonly come in, they've cut holes in the top of their shoes and their toes sticking up because um, they've had this, this tear. And it's not uncommon, like I mentioned, with the steroid injections to um, see this tear and, and elevate over time. A good preventative would be to be in the appropriate shoes, particularly if you're a runner or doing high impact activities, a custom orthotic or even an over-the-counter insert with uh, padding and offloading would help. There's a way to pad the front of the foot with metatarsal pads that can either be built in or added to the shoes uh, to try to take the force striking on the ground at this uh, ligament. So I think a combination of the right shoes, um, avoiding uh, high impact injuries if we can, uh, stretching exercises, we give protocols for that to prevent pressure at that site. Um, I think that's our best way to prevent it um, in the long run. Particularly if you're set up for having hammer toes just genetically, a lot of times a preventative uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, avoiding the surgery and contracture.